like the play scene. Watch on iPlayer, listen on sounds. Now, there's a new book out about a show that was made in Birmingham. But back in the 60s, it was huge. It was watched by millions of teenagers in this country. Thank you, Lucky Stars, the pop show from the 1960s, which had just about anybody that's anybody in the music business on it. And you had uh, judges, Janice Nichols, of course, from Our Neck of the Woods, was on that show for a number of years. It's been put together, the book, by Kevin Mulrennan, who's from Birmingham. Uh, Kevin, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. See, how's yourself? Doing okay. Can we first of all talk about where you got all the photographs and the, what, the sort of memorabilia for this book? Because it's sure. it's, an, it's an enormous tome and it's it really is the, the history of the show, isn't it? It is indeed. Yes, well, the, the photos are great. There was a, fr uh, a friend of mine called Frank Mallett and his mum and dad ran an agency down in the West Country and uh, he provided me with uh, a lot of the photos, which was great. Other sources really are the shows that still exist scripts, um, newspapers, basically it's it's a bit of a research job. I spent many an hour in the old Birmingham Central Library finding out the information. So what was it about Thank Your Lucky Stars that made you want to write a book about the show? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Firstly, I think it's undiscovered territory. There's, you know, Ready, Steady, Goes, Remembered, Top of the Pops. So it's nice to sort of bring that to the front. The fact it's from Birmingham, of course, and being from Birmingham myself it was a major factor. Most of it was filmed in, in Aston. Um, you had bits and pieces were filmed in Teddington in London. But uh, it's quite exciting that most of the big bands of the day headed up the old M1 on a Sunday afternoon to take the show and come to Birmingham. Well, everybody from the Beatles. And there were a lot of American stars that were on it. Oh, yes, yes. Whenever the American stars came across, they made a beeline for the Aston Studios. It was kind of written into their contracts that they'd have an appearance on Thank You Lucky Stars. So it was great. And the, Be the, the Beatles were fantastic. I mean, they appeared on the show more times than... Um, Ready, Steady, Go and, think, and um, Top of the Pops put together and uh, the crowds outside in Aston were huge so th there's pictures of those in the book as well. Yeah, well there's pictures of just about uh, all the, the pop stars that were around in the day because it ran for five years, 61 through to 66 but Pete Murray has done the forward for you. Yes, I've met Pete on a number of occasions. Um, he's still broadcasting. He did uh, a show on Boone Radio there on, on Boxing Day. I've met him on a couple of occasions. I, I go to Kaleidoscope television um, conventions, which are held in Birmingham as well, and uh, I've lucky enough to have met him on a couple of occasions. And through a mutual friend, he very kindly wrote the foreword for me. Yeah, he's now in his mid-90s. He's 96, would you believe? Yeah, still going strong and retired down London Way and um, enjoying life. Because the show itself, there's not... Well, it says in the book, a lot of the tapes of the show were wiped. There's not yes. not many surviving shows. It's really unfortunate. There's only about three left, plus clips of people like Gene Pitney, uh, Patsy Ann Noble, the Beatles. It appears that very soon after transmission, they used to just rewipe the tapes, just, you know, a cost-cutting exercise. But well, I suppose we're looking in some sense that something has survived. So the format of the book, just explain, because you, you've listed various shows, the artists that were on, there are photographs yes. of the artist, and, and who hosted it, because Pete Murray did host a show uh, amongst other people, didn't he? He did, he did. The most famous one, of course, is Brian Matthew, who was there for years, but there's, there's lots of other people. Uh, Jim Dale, of course, uh, the, the later stages, he presented it. Keith Fordyce. There's actually quite a few little guest presenters. There's a time when Brian was having a little minor operation, and um, I've discovered that people like Simon D, Martin Locke and so on, guest appeared on the show and presented it. And there was a section in the show where members of the audience would get involved. Yes. And I, I mentioned Janice Nichols, and I'll, I'll give it for you. That was the, the, right. sort of the classic line. Everybody remembers that if you're a certain age. Because she was booted off the show at one point, and we'll, we'll get to that. A couple that, of but, times, actually. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they revamped the show quite a bit, but she was that popular, they, they took her back. But um, she was always there when Spinner Disc was on from about 60, 60 late 61, 62 onwards. And, and, and Spinner Disc, that was the, the section where you, you had a, a DJ and audience members and the, the people would vote on a song. That's right. I mean, it was a straight rip-off of ju Jukebox Jury on the BBC, basically. It was yeah. um, put together by a man called Alan Freeman, not Alan Fluff Freeman, but he was an executive at Pi Records. So you had Janice Nichols and two other teenagers or three other teenagers and a guest DJ, and they give their marks out of five for the, for the actual show, for the actual records. So in terms of the, the, the shows that are left, I know there's a, there's a Merseyside special with the That's Beatles right. topping the bill, and there's a 66 edition, uh, which yes. featured the Rolling Stones. 
and the, the final edition, which was June 1966. That's and, correct. Yeah, that's, that's about correct, it. Yes. So you never know. Hopefully, um, there's an also a compilation from Australia. They used to chop the show up into little bits and kind of do their own melange of it. And um, that was shown recently in Birmingham last year at the Kaleidoscope Convention. So that there are little clips. Gene Pitney doing a, a song as well, and Patsy Ann Noble, but few audios, but uh, you never know. Hopefully somewhere in some archives somewhere, maybe in Australia, there might be a few more shows kicking around. One of the fascinating things, and I, I don't know, I mean, you must have learned quite a bit in the book, but there are quite a few music artists that were on the show that um, I, I hadn't heard of. Yes, very much so. I mean, um, when I wrote the original book about 20 years ago, there were just names, really, and I didn't really research them. When I did this second edition, I spent a lot of time researching them, and it's fascinating. Really. They're the bands that never quite made it. They might have yeah. had a minor hit or, you know, one or two TV appearances. For me, that was kind of more interesting than learning about the Beatles or the Stones or whatever that everybody knows the story of. And I've been in contact with a few people that have been on the show that didn't have major hits, and it's sort of fascinating to see what happened to their lives. You know, what recently I was at a concert in Birmingham. They had Marty Wilde, they had um, Eden Kane and Mark Winter. And the tour manager is a, a guy called Spencer. And he was on the show and I've made friends with him. And uh, it's fascinating learning about, you know, those, those people that might have had a bad producer or a bad record company that didn't quite make it, that, you know, appeared on the show and their memories are, are, are preserved in the book. Well, Tommy Cooper was on the show. Don't jump off the roof, Dad. Yes, the interesting thing for me, I'm interested in showbiz, and so yeah. um, all the comedians used to plug their comedy records um, on the show, and they made quite a few appearances. That aspect really appeals to me. It was a, a tea time show for families, so they would have these um, comedy records, which are huge in the 60s and 70s, and sold a lot of records, and Mum and Dad could watch that, and then teenagers could watch you know, the Beatles, the Stones, whoever else was on. And for people who sort of love their music, it's a bit of music history, this book. And it's, it's not small by any stretch of the imagination. It's a, it's a pretty big it tome is. that you put together. I don't know how long it took. It took about a year. I mean, I did the original book 20 years ago, and it was a very slim volume, about 100 pages. This took me another year to rewrite. And how do people get hold of it? Uh, it's available on Amazon, and it's available on eBay. If they just type in, thank you, lucky stars, and my name, Kevin Mulrennan, you should find it there. So what are you working on? Anything new at the moment? Yes, I'm working on the sequel. I'm working on, just started, the other pop shows on ABC, weekend television and music. A um, bit more expansive, a bit more jazz and classical and, and things like that. Anything that was musical, basically, on ABC, which, of course, served the Midlands in the 60s. Thank you, Lucky Stars. The 60s pop show... Uh, the, the story behind it, the people that were on it, so many photographs in there. You've got scripts as well. I've got hold of a script off eBay years and years ago, and I've, I've, I've put that verbatim in there. There might be people listening who were in the audience. I would imagine. I've got their, uh, quite a few of their stories in there. That's fascinating, yeah. really, how uh, it affected the people who saw it. Kevin Mulrennan has put the book together. Thank you, Lucky Stars. Kevin, pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Frank. Thanks.